Daniel Hannon once said, you cannot spend your way out of recession or borrow your way out of debt. Keep this in mind as I discuss today the truth about how bad the economy is in Europe and how Europe's collapse, economically speaking, will impact the global economy. My name is Dr. David Wadalu and you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. It's getting worse by the day. Electricity bills are soaring, gas reserves are depleting, and winter is coming. It's shaping up to be a big week for EU economic affairs after the ECB announced an unprecedented rate hike. With energy prices soaring in much of the world, in Italy, it's unsurprisingly become a key issue in the election. Nuclear energy, building out wind energy, say we do have a secure supply of energy. But can you still guarantee it? Before I jump in, in, into discussing this topic, I have two new YouTube channels to announce to you. One is called Geopolitical Trends, where I give you the most important information live as it happens. And the second one is the heart of the warrior. It gives you the resources and skills to level the playing field so you can have control over your own life. We also have a free webinar called The Great Illusion, Understanding the Real Turnings of Global Politics. And this one will be uh, on November 9th, so make sure to sign up at www.geopoliticsinconflict.com forward slash great. And the link will be provided for, for you herein also. Is European economy doomed? I am here to provide you insight you will not get anywhere else. But before I delve deeper, make sure to hit the like button so the algorithm can push us forward. So I also want to thank you for your continued support. It means a lot to us. Let's dive in. Has Europe prepared to live without Russian gas? Or has it found an alternative? Those are basic questions we need to ask. A group of economic studies defend the possibility of Europe overcoming the gas crisis with minimal losses. Yeah, right. <laughs> Has Europe prepared to live without Russian gas? The answer is a compelling no, and I will tell you why. The closer winter approaches, okay, the greater the tensions among European governments do to the gas crisis resulting from Russia's complete and permanent halt to pumping its gas to Europe. No. So immediately after the Russian decision, uh, uh, attention turned to Europe's gas reserves with which it will face the cold and the approaching winter. There is no doubt about it. So following Russia's announcement that it will, it will stop pumping gas, Gas prices, of course, in the world market rose by about 30% and reached sort of the rise in prices corresponding to 400% compared to the previous year. So while Moscow expects that Europe will find itself facing a real energy disaster in the absence of Russian gas, a group of economic studies defended the possibility of the old continent overcoming this crisis. Which I don't believe it is true. Because here's the thing. The study, in my opinion, does not reflect true reality on the ground. You know, then it puts us to ask the relevant question. Is Europe prepared to live without Russian gas? How are Europe's gas reserves doing today? So the European Union uh, announced recently that it has reached the goal of storing 80% of its gas needs by the beginning of September last month. And that storage will continue to reach a level of 90% in November. But all this, they're saying this without concrete evidence, of course. The storage ratio in a number of European countries exceeded 80%. This is according to their statements and approached 90%. As in the case of France, 
Italy, Germany, Poland, Denmark, the Czech Republic, Spain and Sweden. Once again, can you trust what the European Union or governments in Paris and Berlin are saying? You can have the answer yourself. You know. Some Eastern European countries are far from this goal, such as Latvia, for example, which only reached 65%. You got countries like Austria, Hungary as well. They don't have enough capacity or storage capacity, that is. However, all eyes remain on Germany as the largest economy in Europe. So despite Germany's storage of 84% of gas, it doesn't have any. That's not enough. Here is the thing. The call for an European Union gas price cap, which Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, Hungary and Denmark have opposed already. It comes as the 27th nations of the EU is scrambling right now for a joint response to the unfolding cost of living crisis that was caused by the collapse of the Russian gas deliveries in retaliation for the EU support for Ukraine. You know. So the next common question will be, what are the alternative for European Union to compensate for Russian gas? The European Commission's plan to compensate for Russia gas, we find that it will depend on three main axes. The first one of which is the Southern Gas Corridor. This, this one, this corridor passes through Azerbaijan, Georgia, Turkey, Greece, Bulgaria, Albania, and the Adriatic Sea. And it will be delivered to Italy via pipeline, which is about 3,500 kilometers. So according to European Commission data, this pipeline has already begun to pump 10 billion cubic meters of gas to Europe. And is it expected to reach a minimum of at least or a level of 10.5 billion by the end of 2022? So let me tell you something that the Western media decided not to disclose or the European Union is that Germany by itself imports about 142 billion cubic meters of gas in 2021. So can you imagine how much he needs with the shortage from Russia right now? So this is what I'm saying. Can you trust what the European Union is saying? The second option is to rely on the Mediterranean Sea as a platform for gas to reach Europe. And here, the European Commission is talking about Algeria, which by the way refused to give gas to Europe, Egypt and Cyprus to supply gas either through gas pipelines or by importing LNG, liquefied natural gas. But there is no gas delivered yet. So all this is nothing but talks, you know. Then there is the third option. And the third option, which is importing and storing liquefied natural gas. And here, the European Commission identified three main sources, namely the United States, Qatar, and East Africa. So speaking of Qatar, Qatar stated in no uncertain terms that there is no alternative to Russian natural gas supplies, unless Europe wants to get devastated for several winters to come. Qatar, which is one of the top liquefied natural gas producers in the world, as a matter of fact, it's the second, has warned Europe of doomsday scenarios. You know, Qatar, the world's largest exporter of liquefied natural gas, is convinced that if the European Union wants to ensure access to gas for years to come, it must ensure that Russia started supplying its gas again. And of course, Russia has one simple conditions for Europe. Remove economic sanctions and deliveries of gas. As much gas as Europe wants from Russia will resume immediately. 
European countries are estimated to need about at least 112 million tons of gas, equal to nearly one-third of the entire global liquefied natural gas market to replace Russian gas. Let that sink in. The world's largest liquefied natural gas exporters, the United States and Qatar, cannot supply such volume to Europe, not even close to it. No. As a result, Europe will continue to face massive supply deficits in the years to come, leading to the demise of all majority of its industries and basically a collapse of the economy which we are already witnessing its beginning in the UK, Germany, France, and others. The impact may not pinch European Union countries this winter, since they've already managed to get their uh, storages full, at least for this winter. But in subsequent winters, such countries will find it extremely difficult to secure supplies. Then what will happen? Just imagine this. What will happen if the temperature dropped below freezing? That enough storage will not be enough. Qatar Energy Minister uh, Saad al kabi once said he can picture a future with zero Russian natural gas flows to Europe. And he said, and I quote, if that's the case, then I think the problem is going to be huge and for a very, very long time. The problem for Europe arises out of the fact that it is not the only buyer of liquefied natural gas in the world. And the reason being because Qatar also has contractual obligations to buyers in Asia. And that means Europe cannot really hope for a, a miraculous increase in gas supplies to its shores anytime soon. So for Qatar, ensuring that contracts with Asian buyers are fulfilled and is a priority. Qatar minister, uh, energy minister, who happens to be the CEO of Qatar Energy. And he said that the kingdom will not divert liquefied natural gas that is contracted with Asia to Europe this winter. It will not happen. And he said, and I quote, Qatar is absolutely committed to the sanctity of contract. End of quote. Europe was counting on Qatar to ramp up its supply of liquefied natural gas to the continent in an unprecedented manner. The Middle Eastern Kingdom, however, has made it clear that it cannot do so at least until 2025. So the irony is this. Germany announced the construction of three floating gas storage stations with a return to reliance on nuclear energy and abandoning the decision to close three nuclear plants. So which means what? Germany has begun repairing coal mines and power stations that were closed about 10 years ago. So Germany is also expected to burn more than 100,000 tons of coal. This is a big shift from Germany's commitment to permanently get rid of dependence on coal by 2038. And you have, of course, Austria, Poland, the Netherlands, Greece have also restarted coal plants. So how do European countries face raising gas prices, you may ask yourself. Well, after gas prices rose by 400% and several energy generating companies announced that they would not be able to provide citizens with energy given the high prices. European governments announced a package of measures where the UK government, for example, which is about to be bankrupt, announced that it will freeze the periodic review of energy prices, leading to a rise in gas and electricity bills. Every three months, France announced that it has spent 
26 billion dollars to spare citizens the rise in gas prices since the outbreak of the war in Ukraine. As for Germany, it, it has allocated more than 65 billion dollars to support companies and citizens to protect them from the skyrocketing prices of gas and energy. Finland also announced the allocation of 10 billion dollars to support energy companies and not to raise prices. Sweden allocated 23 billion dollars for the same purpose. You see where this is headed. So, so here is again the main question. Will Europe survive? There's a study by a research center called Bruegel. It's, a, it's a, a located in Brussels, and I will provide you the link for it, which is based in, in Belgium capital, Brussels, shows that it will be possible for Europe to survive the worst winter since World War II. But it will have a clear economic impact and European governments will have to make difficult decisions. This is what Mario Monti uh, stated, and he's the chairman of this Brigal Institute. But if you know who Mario Monti is, and I'm going to tell you, Monti, he was the head of a government in Italy. And back in uh, 2011, Monti's government introduced energy austerity measures intended to stem the worsening economic conditions in Italy and restore market confidence, especially after rising Italy's government bond yield began to threaten Italy's financial stability. According to the same study, the only option for European countries now to bypass their dependence on Russia's gas is to reduce European consumption by 10 to 15 percent. And in the German case, they will have to reduce gas consumption by 20 percent during the next six months to overcome the, this crisis. It's nonsense. So, so what are the economic effects of stopping Russian gas? Storing gas for European countries was not an easy task. Rather, it cost European governments a uh, budget about 70 billion dollars compared to 12 billion dollars spent by Europe to store gas last year. Which means what? An increase of more than five times. It has become almost certain that the Eurozone and the UK for that matter will enter a state of economic stagnation that may last until the end of next year, if not longer. Inflation rate among European countries reaching above 10%. This is five times higher than the rate set by the European Bank, which it says it was at 2%, which is a lie. You know. Even the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, announced that the four largest economies in the European Union, France, Germany, Italy, and Spain, will achieve a lower than expected growth rate during 2023. As for Britain, well, it's on the verge of bankruptcy. You all saw the resignation of Truss, you know, which I've been saying for the last four or five weeks that she's not qualified, she was not qualified for the job. And the UK central bank announced that the UK has already entered a state of recession and expected the inflation to reach 13% by the end of 2022. So here is my conclusion to you. Europe's plan to replace Russia's gas are deemed wildly optimistic and could hammer its economy. There is no replacement for Russian gas. That's the bottom line. So here is my question for you for today. What should Europe do to solve its energy crisis? Make sure to leave me uh, some comments and I will respond. As always, prepare yourself for a changing world order. Till next time, guys. Bye-bye.